yeah, it's like, uh, you know, in the age of, um, not the age, because VMware is still very strong and growing, but it's like no one asked about, oh, tell me more about the ESX hypervisor. Why should I go for that? That was just a given. Like, no, I'm buying ESX because there's vSphere and there's yeah. vCloud and there's vCenter and vXYZ. And, and it was, uh, and I trusted it. Um, yeah, and it kind of interoperated with NetApp and EMC and this and that. Um, so it seems like Kubernetes is the hypervisor and now you want to have that vSphere or that 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 abstraction above and, and that's where operators comes in. So it looks like the conversation is elevated up. Hmm. Yeah, so I think you've got to go beyond operators. Um, the, the key focus for us is model-driven operators, right? The idea that the operator isn't something that you drive directly, but it is an actor in a scene that you've painted, right? So you become much more the director of the movie and you're essentially saying to all these professional actors, you know, broadly speaking, here's what I want you to achieve, right? And then the software figures out how to achieve what you want to achieve. But the point being that you've now not tied yourself to some low level decisions. Yeah, right? that's meta. So the operator yeah. for operators-ish kind of thing is where you're going, right? Yeah. So we, we pioneered the idea of an operator pattern, software that drives software. Um, and uh, and we, we pioneered that in the early stages of the cloud. Um, now what we're doing is bringing that to the Kubernetes world so that you can build models on Kubernetes that don't express low level details, they only express high level details of what you wanna be running at what sort of scale and with what patterns of integration. And then essentially software takes that model and implements it, but can continue to evolve that implementation so that you're not trapped in manual decisions that someone made five years ago, seven years ago, you know, with this hash of a Docker image you know, on that IP address, why? Right. Was that important or was that not important? Was that just a detail or was that critical? Today, you know, people who are kind of rushing into Kubernetes, they have no, they have no pattern for that. They have no, no ability to express the difference between the business decisions and the implementation decisions. So model-driven operators and universal operators, I think, are the, are the way out of that story. Um, if you go to juju.is, you, you find the sort of crystallization of that. And if you go to charmhub.io, you find a collection of operators, some of which are designed to work on Kubernetes and some of which are designed to work on machines so that you can take this operator pattern and essentially build from bare metal up to virtual machines, up to containers effectively, and have models all the way down, right? And you can you can essentially integrate things that are running on bare metal on machines with things that are running in containers on Kubernetes in the same place or somewhere else, right? So really thinking through the application management story and the long-term integration management story um, deeply, I think is, is a key differentiator for Canonical, right? You, you, you could see earlier, I was saying that we, didn't get that invested in trying to control the details of what a container looks like or what the, what the API is in Kubernetes for this. Because I really don't think that matters. What matters, I think, is the institution's ability to describe its business goals in software and then to have machinery take care of that, right? In a way which can be moved, right, to a newer version of Kubernetes, can be moved to newer versions of software, can evolve, right? can stretch across clouds. Um, that I think is the, is, the, is the really hard problem to solve. Um, and that's been a, um, a very deep investment in R&D for us uh, that, that I think our customers really, really appreciate. You, you don't find that anywhere else. I like that because it reminds me of like the, you know, 10 years ago, we used to talk about the Amazon AMI issue, like which AMI should I choose as a gajillion? Um, maybe the top three, which one should I choose? And so like, maybe we're getting into that, that point where, or we'll get to that point with operators, you know, that same parallel issue. Um, and so this is bringing it together, but do you see any risks in doing that too early? Um, you know, without actually sorting through all this stuff and shaking it out or. 
Oh, nothing ever gets fully shaken out before it's overtaken, right? So you know what I mean. I think you can <laughs> you can, you can freeze, uh, but I, I wouldn't do that. You've got to you've got to be sort of thinking about the problems caused by the solutions to the problems people are currently trying to solve, right? So yes, cube sprawl um, is a real thing, right? Like how, how many Kubernetes clusters do you have? Do you know what they are? Do you know what's on them? Do you know why it's running there? That's a real that's a real issue. Um, uh, but before people have really understood that that's the issue, they will they will then have sort of serverless sprawl, right? Which will be the next wave of that. Um, so that's why for me, really thinking through what it means to operate software is more important than being too obsessed with trying to be seen to be a leader of TensorFlow or a leader of, of um, uh, you know, ML flow or a leader of uh, Apache Yarn or something like that, right? Those are, those are um, stars. We're interested in galaxies, right? Um, you have to have the stars. We do. Ubuntu effectively gives us those stars. But what matters is our ability to help people kind of weave them together and build stuff that spans clouds, that spans bare metal data centers, that spans, you know, different kinds of compute substrate. Um, that's either more centralized or more distributed and integrate all of that in a way that you can reason about, right? It's not just a pile of things people did, right? It's, it's models that essentially have behaviors associated with them. My observation, and tell me if you agree, uh, and this is more of a macro kind of observation of the industry. Um, you know, we, we've seen Rancher uh, get acquired. We've seen Heptio, CoreOS. And, and so it feels like you know, you can uh, bank on 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 those on on new age vendors coming up, new entrepreneurs coming up with their stacks. But it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an inevitability before they get acquired. At least in my observation, at the infrastructure level of the stack, you're going to get acquired. You're not going to become a company like Salesforce. Um, first of all, do you agree to that observation? And then number two, it makes even more sense to kind of think more meta um, at the model driven approach then. Yeah, what, what, what matters to the consuming organization is essentially days two through 10,000, right? And there will be a lot of change over that period. Small vendors will get acquired, vendors will fail. All of those changes require you to adapt and evolve, right? New things will show up and need to be integrated. Um, and so concentrating on your ability to do that seems to me to be your, 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 your fitness program, right? The, the single thing that you can focus on that gives you maximum competitive fitness in a world that you can't predict, right? Yep. yep. The good news is most of the changes I think that we've seen uh, have been for the better, you know what I mean? It, it, it is a, a far more dynamic, innovative software landscape today than it was five years ago and was far more innovative and dynamic five years ago than it was 10 years ago. So, so the trend is, you know, exciting. The, the hard part is owning all of that excitement and can, you know, curbing one's enthusiasm enough to essentially do it in a structured, rigorous way. Yeah. Yeah. 